Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and today we are going to work on another trigger scenario using helper class and this scenario was asked in Amazon interview so without wasting any more time let's get started before going to scenario let's understand the object model for today's scenario so we have two objects tag firm and employee and these objects are connected to each other by lookup relationship tag firm is the parent object and employee is the child object also on tag firm object there are two fields max salary and min salary which indicates maximum and minimum salary of employees working in that firm and on employee object we have a field salary which indicates salary of the employee now the requirement is to update max and min salary field on tax firm object whenever a new employee record is inserted updated deleted or undeleted so this is our today's scenario it's time to code so let's go to vs code and create our helper class let's name it trg helper let's create a method public static void trg method now we need records on which we can start our work but which objects record we should choose tech firm or employee see according to our scenario we need to update fields of tech firm which is parent object whenever employee record changes where employee is the child object now because change is happening on employee object therefore our trigger will be on it so firstly we will take list of employee record as argument let's take a list employee emp list and in this list we will pass trigger dot new from our trigger so this list is basically equals to trigger dot new now our first step is to fetch id of tag firm object and store it in a set so let's create a set first set id parent ids set id now apply a null check on this list if input is empty iterate over it emp emp list see this is a little bit tricky part in update operation there could be a scenario in which user changes parent record of child record so in that scenario we need to update max and min salary field on both old parent and new parent record and for that we'll be needing id of both old parent and new parent so to get id of old parent tech firm record we will use trigger.oldmap so let's take another argument map id employee let's name it old map and in this argument we will pass trigger dot old map from our trigger so this argument is basically equals to trigger dot old map let's apply a null check on this map old map not equals to null and let's create an instance of employee record employee let's name it old emp old map dot get new emp dot id basically this instance will be used to get old values of the record now we will use if condition and inside this if condition we will apply a check that if new parent of employee record is not equals to old parent of that record like this dot tag firm not equals to new emp this is for new record tag firm now if this if condition will get true then we will add both parent ids in a set so copy our set name and paste it here dot add firstly for old parent and after that for new parent dot tag firm but we also need to store parent id of employee whenever user update its field values for that let's use else condition here and here what we will do we will copy this line for new record and paste it here now this block of code is mainly for update operation because inside this old map we will pass value from our trigger only on update operation 
and for other operations like insert, delete or undelete, we will keep it null. But we need to store parent ID on other operations also. So let's use another else condition here. And inside this else condition, we have to do the same thing that we did here. So copy this line and paste it here. Now we will have parent ID of employee records on every operations. It's time to perform main part of our code. Basically, we need to get maximum and minimum salary amount among all employee records of tech firm. For that, we will use aggregate query. So let's create a list like this. Aggregate result. Select tech firm TFID. Now we want to find maximum salary amount among all related employee records. So we will use max aggregate function like this salary max salary. So basically this is our aggregate function and this is the field on which we want to do our calculation and this is the variable by which we can access the values of those calculations. Similarly for minimum salary In salary from employee where tech firm in are set. Now here is another important thing. We are not performing any aggregate function on this field. That's why we need to group it. Otherwise we will get an error like field must be group or aggregated. So let's group it group by tech firm. Let's apply a null check on this list. If dot is empty, iterate over it. And create an instance of tech firm record. Tech firm, new tech firm. And after that, we have dot. Now here we want to use field from our aggregated query. So let's see how we can use a field of aggregated query. Firstly, we need to give the data type of the field which we want to use. So we want to use ID. So let's give ID data type. And after that, we need to give the iterated variable name. So copy this name and paste it here. Dot get. And inside this bracket, we need to give the variable that we have used in our aggregated query. So copy this name and paste it here. Similarly, let's update max and min salary field tf dot max salary data type dot get copy this variable name and paste it here tf dot min salary data type get copy this name and paste it here apply a null check on this map and let's perform dml operation on it dot values save it and deploy it to org so it is successfully deployed now we have our helper class ready so let's create a trigger, name it EMP salary TRG and a trigger will be on employee object with after event because we are updating its parent record values after it gets saved to database. So let's write employee here, firstly for after insert, after update after delete and at last after undelete. Firstly, we will use our helper class method for update operation. So for that, let's use if condition like this and let's apply a check for update operation. Trigger dot is update. Copy our helper class name and paste it here. 
copy our method name and paste it here now in first argument we will pass trigger dot new and in second argument we will pass trigger dot old map so firstly for first argument and after that for second similarly for delete operation let's use another else if apply a check trigger dot is delete copy this line and paste it here but for after delete we will pass trigger dot old in first argument because we cannot have new version of record after its deletion and in second argument we will pass null because there is no need of it so let's pass trigger dot old here and let's pass null here and to cover other operations like insert and undelete we will use another else copy this line and paste it here and for insert and undelete operation we will pass trigger dot new in first argument and we will keep it null for second let's pass trigger dot new save it and deploy it to org okay it is successfully deployed it's time to test our triggers so let's go to our org we already have two records of tech firm object let's go to first here we can see that nothing is present in these fields now firstly we will test for insert operation so for that let's go to related click on new let's add one record and salary will be 100 save and new let's create one more record and salary will be 200 save it now if our trigger is working fine then in max salary field 200 should present and in min salary field 100 should be there so for that let's go to details see our trigger is working fine for insert operation now let's update salary of the employee which has 100 salary click on edit and we will update it to 1000 save it go to details this field has been updated which means our trigger is working fine for update operation now let's check the scenario in which we will change the parent of record let's go to related again click on edit and let's change its parent click on save go to that record and these fields are showing correct values which means our trigger is working fine for update operation also. Let's go to that record again. Let's set third record. TMP3 and salary will be 300. Add one more record also. 400. Click on save. Now we want to check that whether our trigger is working fine for delete and undelete operation or not. But before that, let's check the field values. Go to delete it again. Delete this record. The values have been updated, which means our trigger is working fine for delete operation. And to check for undelete operation, we need to go to recycle bin. And from recycle bin, we will store the record that we have deleted earlier. Let's restore it. Go to that record again. Let's refresh it. See, values have been updated again, which means our trigger is working fine for every scenario. But here is the twist there is still a scenario left. Let's see that scenario. To check that scenario, we need to delete old records. Delete this record. Delete this record also. Go to details. Refresh it. So it is showing correct values. Let's delete this last record also. Refresh it. 
see it is still showing previous values but instead of showing previous values it should show zero when there are no records present to solve that issue what we will do let's go to code again and here we will iterate over our set copy our set name id ids get an instance of tech firm record df new tech firm df dot id will be equals to ids and here we will assign zero to max and min salary field like this zero df dot salary equals to zero and let's add this code inside this map df dot id comma df basically we are updating max and min salary field to zero when there are no employee records present on tech firm deploy it to work it is successfully deployed to check this scenario we need to add few more records test one salary let's say 100 S2 and salary 200. As of now, it is showing correct values. Now let's delete these records. Go to details, refresh it. Now it is showing zero, which means our trigger is working fine for every scenario. So that's it for today, guys. And I'll be back with more interesting trigger scenarios. Thank you.